Uh, as governor, what steps would you take immediately? You all agree climate change is real, but as governor at the state level, what state steps would you take immediately to combat the problem? I'm not going to wait till then. Uh, I've already been working hard on the executive council to invest more in our clean tech and clean energy economy here in New Hampshire. There are solar and renewable energy projects in Berlin, Plymouth, Portsmouth, Durham, uh, the largest solar array in the state in Peterborough, the solar arrays on the roof of the airport parking lot in Manchester that I fought hard for, most of which got passed by a three to two vote, most a bipartisan vote. And we need to have solar and renewable energy projects stop being the exception. They need to start being the rule because when you invest in the clean energy economy, you tend to bring down energy costs, create local jobs and protect the environment. Uh, one of the best ways we can do that is energy efficiency. And there's an area where the governor can lead a lot. I, I just voted recently to improve the snow guns. Cannon Mountain. It seems like a small thing, but this is a state park that spends millions of dollars a year on electricity. And by using more energy efficient apparatus there, they can actually have better snow coverage and lower their costs at the same time. That's one of the great things about the clean energy economy. It's a way to win-win and drive our economy forward. Mr. Marshan, what's your first move as governor to combat climate change? Sure. Look, the overall public policy, conservation is the best move in New Hampshire as a small part of a big region for electricity consumption and generation. The only way we're going to make big impact at the business level or the residential level is if we do a better job of conservation. And so I think expanding programs aggressively that encourage businesses and individuals to be able to um, save money and save energy is where you go. By the way, as the only candidate 100% against Northern Pass project, one of the reasons for that, as well as the NED project, one of the reasons for that is that I think in addition to the problems they bring to the table, they also would squash for the next 10 to 20 years a lot of really exciting projects that I believe are on the cusp of occurring. And that includes solar, it includes biomass, and it includes offshore wind. These are, as the economies of these are quickly getting better, things that we can do to modernize the grid. That's not a day one thing. That's a multi-year commitment. But when we talk about infrastructure, there are a few things we could do to uh, get solar, offshore, biomass more quickly into the economic bloodstream than if we modernize our grid. And Mr. Connolly, any immediate steps you'd take? To yes, our, our, our stated goal, public policy goal, is to have 25% of our stated energy from renewables by 2025. I'm not sure we're going to get there, and we should be able to get there. We've had some of these legislatures in the past several years try and roll it back. We should have a commitment to have 50% by 2035. It's doable, and the way we're going to get there is a renewable portfolio standard. We have to start increasing our commitment to this area, and we have to have the regional greenhouse gas initiative, which has been basically starting to be rolled back in terms of bringing down the amount of carbon it's going to be in, the, in our atmosphere. We should, bring, we should commit, recommit that in 2020. And, and energy conservation, that's a big part of it. So we have to really commit ourselves to renewable energy. And I've been working on this since the 1970s when I was a legislate, legislature, when I was a state representative. And I worked on it when I was a member of the board of directors of the Hampshire Audubon Society back 15 years ago. This is a real issue. We have to get renewables and we can do it if we step in and have the right leadership. All right, thank you, Kansas.